But give me some. How do we know if he did or he didn't? He used. We used uh, to... people's writings about him. Okay. And uh, what would you call it? What would you call that? Historical. Historical evidence. And there's a word for it when it's not in the Bible. <coughs> Secular. Yeah. Secular. That's true. Yeah. What about a big D in the back? What was it? When it's not in the Bible. Evidence that isn't in the Bible. What about us? What's it called? Huh? Secondhand movies. Mm, no. When it's not in the Bible, there's a word for it. It's called extra biblical. With not using the Bible, besides the Bible, extra biblical. So I just want you guys to get those couple things because uh, those are some things you got to remember. All right, one harder question. Some people that we looked at, we looked at certain people who wrote about Jesus, uh, who wrote about him in that time period, maybe within a hundred years. There's a couple characters that you should remember. Because if you're having a conversation with somebody, they ask you, well, why do you believe in Jesus? Remember we talked about that last week? And, you know, David mentioned that for a lot of us, that we, just because our parents taught us that. And uh, um, some, so I think someone said, because the Bible said so. And, but if they ask you, okay, if you don't use the Bible, how do you know Jesus really existed? What would you say? And hopefully that class helped you. But if you don't remember, we're going to have to brush up on it. Anybody? Just come on, Steve, hit us. I know you got it in there. Nothing? What would you say? Come on, man. I ain't asking for the right, perfect answer. Just anything. What would you say? I don't know. I mean, you got me. Um, someone named John wrote about him before it even happened. All right. Not really, but it's a good try, Steve. It's a good try, man. <laughs> All right, so what, John, the first name John, um, we actually, we didn't look at anyone last week who was John, but of course he's in the Bible. But he was after. He was after Jesus, or during that time. But I'll give you a couple names. Josephus, Flavius Josephus. He was the Jewish historian. Those things you got to remember, because when, and when you're in college, you're going to take any religion classes? Are you? Have you taken it? Anybody ever taken a religion class? Never? Okay, when you're in college, they're going to talk about religion. They're going to bring these things up. And depending on what college, what professor, they're going to talk to you about, well, you know, is it, you, how do you know he existed just outside the Bible? I mean, the Bible is written by Christians, so how can you trust it? It's biased. <laughs> That's at least the belief. So how would you respond to that? And one way is to say, well, we went over some people... Uh, extra biblical evidence, and some are Josephus, Tacitus, Talus, Pliny the Younger. Talus, yeah. Pliny the Younger, do you remember who he was? He wrote about Nero. He asked, he was asking, no, he was asking another guy, he said, how do I get rid of all these Christians? They're just, I don't, this is the first time I ever had to persecute them. I don't know how to do it. Teach me. So he was talking about Christians, that, and we just deduced from that that there must have been a Jesus for them to be Christians, you know, Christ-like, and that was so early. All right, so that's uh, that's some of what we learned. Uh, but obviously, uh, we're not retaining the info, so we're going to have to figure something out. Um, today, we're going to learn something different. Um, and I think the whole goal is... I really don't want to just teach you guys stuff. Uh, I think I'm hoping we can start doing a little change on that because uh, what's the point if you learn it and you're not going to use it? You, know, you really have to start using it. So like this stuff that we learned last week, if you guys get in conversation with somebody, you know, you know I'm not asking you to be a Christian. I'm not going to ask you to do that. That's a conversation you have to have. Uh, but you should know some things about it. And you should know that, that we don't just know Jesus existed just because the Bible said so. There's, there's other evidence outside that he, he isn't just a myth. He did exist. All right, so today we're going to learn about something different. Uh, we're going to learn about myth, myths, deities. Anybody know of any mythological deities? you got to know some. Movies made about some. 
Greek gods. Yeah, Greek gods. Anybody know any? None. Come on, uh, Zeus, Hercules, Poseidon. Come on, bro, bring him out. Who else? Cleopatra. Was she one? What else? Uh, give me some ancient, more ancient ones. I don't really know many. I did some research. That's the only way I found out. But myths, ancient myths. <clears throat> How, do you think there any of those are true? Was there really a Zeus? You don't know? That's all right. If you don't know, it's okay. I, what do you think? I think, yeah, but they didn't do what they like, like said to do. Okay. Like, so you're saying that you do believe that they're, they really did exist, but they didn't... Like I, like I don't think I think believe that like there were actual people, but people just saw them as gods. Okay. So I don't think. Yeah. We should look into that. Uh huh. So one thing you got to think about when we're studying this this is big. I don't know if you guys knew about when 9/11 happened. You guys all know what 9/11 is. <laughs> awesome. When 9/11 happened, a movie came out, and it was called the Zeitgeist or something. And it had three main points. It was to show that Jesus and Christianity was a myth, a copycat religion of myths, to show that the Twin Towers was rigged by the government, and that the Federal Reserve is all messed up, something like that. So it had three points. And it was a movie that came out, and it blew up. And then after that, a lot of people started, well, maybe this Christianity thing is a myth. And uh, oh my gosh, I forgot something. Um, Maybe this Christianity thing is a myth. And uh, I forgot my notes at my house. <laughs> Good thing most of it is here and yeah, right here. <laughs> so uh, anybody have a Bible today? Bible, you have one? Okay, we're gonna need it. Um, thank you. I was getting, like I said, I was getting my brother out. He got my mind off things. Um, okay, so some myths, some people believe Jesus to be a myth like uh, others. <clears throat> But, uh, wow, i got to do this off memory because my notes aren't here. Okay, see if you can tell me who this is. I'm going to describe him to you. Um, he was born in a manger. He had a virgin mother. He had 12 disciples. He was baptized by, I forget the guy's name. He was... Uh, um, he, I said he had 12 disciples. He was, uh, he was buried in a cave, rose the third day. He had followers. He had followers. He had disciples. He taught. They said he was the Logos. They said he was, uh, the Messiah. And, um, who am I talking about? Anybody? <laughs> what am I talking about? Jesus. If you were taking a religion class, they would say no. They're actually talking about Mithras. Mithras. I don't know if you've know, done any research on it, but there's, there's, what's said today is there's exact similarities between this god, Mithras, who existed a thousand years before Jesus, and the claims that they made for him are the same as Jesus. So this, this is going to come up. And what would you say? If there was a, if there was a de deity, if there was a deity named Mithras, and he existed a thousand years before Jesus, and they said that he was baptized by John the Baptizer, he was killed, put in a cave, he rose three days later, he had 12 disciples. His mother was a virgin. And now you're telling me Jesus did this? Well, this guy was first. Who's the copycat? What would you say to that? I'm hoping by the end of the class, which is about 15 minutes or 20, you'll have some, some, way, to, some way to combat it or some way to have an answer that you're probably going to forget next Saturday. But hopefully, hopefully it'll stick some of it. So I'm serious. This is how it is. There's, there was this guy who took his atheist class. He has a high school class. He took them to Berkeley, and they had a conversation with some atheists, and he came into the room, and he gave a presentation like I'm doing now. 
And he said, he just started describing him. He was born on, on December 25th. He did all this in the, you know, and then one kid said, well, that's Jesus. He said, no, actually, that's Mithras. And then she was like, oh, my gosh, what? So when you, get, when you come across this, because you will, if you have a conversation with people, especially in New Age, things like that, they're going to tell you that, and you're going to be like, well, I, I don't know. But I'm hoping you have some answers today. All right, so these are the few that Jesus is compared to. Horus, Osiris, Mithras. Was there any proof he existed? There's ancient temples used to worship him, and those exist. Thank you. I brought it. Thank you. Save my life. So there's, there's no proof that... You know, like he actually existed, but there are temples that they found and they've got stuff together that shows that they worshipped this God. Um, so that's what exists. He's a myth. Everybody pretty much agrees that he's a myth. And that's why they say, if Jesus is a copycat, then Jesus is also a myth. Um, so but this... That makes no sense, though. Because there's proof that Jesus was, like, real. Right. Right. So how that a myth? Well, that's the argument. That's the argument. That he was a myth. This is the argument that Jesus is a myth. All right? So that, use that, use that. But that's still, that's still getting, how are you going to, because they, you know, they have stuff to show that they worship this Mithras God. And, you know, they, they have very little, but we'll get into that. Um, can you help me on time? Keep me on. Let me know when I got like 15 minutes. Like, okay, so I mean ten forty five. Yes. So the first tradition started in ancient Iran. Okay, we're gonna talk about Mithras today. Because that's the one who's most commonly attributed to uh, being like Jesus. And Steve, who are we talking about today? Mithras. Awesome. Got it. Next week I'm gonna ask you guys. Mithras. Mithras. Alright. The first tradition started in ancient Iran in India. All right, so that was bef that was in ancient Iran and India. That was the first time people started worshiping Mithras and had all these shrines about 500 to 1,000 years before Jesus. All right, and then there was another instance that it started after uh, in Rome when Jesus was around. It was going on then. So they have these two these two um, peoples worshiping the same God but at different times. So a thousand years before Jesus, then it kind of died off, then it resurrected again around Jesus' time. So what happens is when historians are going back and looking at things, is they often put them all together. This is all one religion going on this whole time. And, uh, you know, they pull things out, which we'll see. Um, so Mithras was best known for being the bull slayer. All right? He was in, in, the new, in Rome, at least. That's what he was known for. Uh, I want to go over a little bit of, just a little bit of history of him. Um, you know, I, all the information that comes from him doesn't come from scripture. There's no Bible or anything like that. It's all from murals, from writings, um, and dis historic Christians describing Mithras, at least in the Roman period, their practices. Uh, all of the work, most all of the work is speculation. You know what speculation is? It's just like, I'm, I think that's what that means, you know, just but I'm not sure. I'm doing the best I can to gather because all they're looking at is pictures and statues and they're trying to, what does this all mean? And so that's how they're getting information from this. So you can see that it's often up to the person's opinion. Um, so this is the important part that, you, you know, just, just to think about. In 1975, um, <clears throat> uh, this, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but at least this guy said it's it's really hard to master this Mithras religion because you have to be you have to master all these different fields, linguistics, anthropology, all of that, and it's like almost impossible. But this one guy in the 19th to the 20th century was known to be like the expert on Mithraism, and his name was Franz Camont. Franz Camont sounds like he's French, but that's what that's what his name was. And he worked on, he, Kamal worked with the thesis that Mithraic belief was of a continuous, fairly invariable tapestry from its early history up to the Roman period. So his, his saying was that from thousand years before Jesus to Roman period, even after, it was all one. 
which now scholars say, no, that's not the case. Um, see, I got that. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, but like I said, he was best known for slaying the bull. Um, I'm going to read the last point here. It says, by the time of the first International Congress of Mithric Studies in the early 70s, the lack of evidence of Iranian-Roman continuity led Mithric scholars to suspect that Roman Mithraism was a new creation using old Iranian names and details for an exotic coloring to give a suitably es esoteric appearance to a mystery cult. All right, so pretty much what he's saying is that in the 70s, they all got together and they said, you know, after studying all this, there's no way this is all one continuous religion. The new, the new guys in Rome took the old god and they just put new things to it. It's a totally different thing. They just use the same god, Mithras, and changed it up. All right? So, here's what we're going to look at now. We're going to look at some claims that people say about Mithras that he was actually, Jesus stole this from Mithras, that's the claim, and see what you guys can come up from it. How can you argue against it? Maybe just with the info I gave you. Mithras was born of a virgin on December 25th in a cave to, attended by shepherds, all right? That's the claim. So maybe none of you guys will ever go to religion class, maybe, but you might talk with somebody who does believe this, because on the internet right now, it's pretty big. Uh, I watch a lot of atheists, um, things on YouTube this week. I sent a couple out, and uh, they believe it pretty, pretty strongly. Uh, so uh, David's pretty confident that he could debate him and tell him, hey, well, he actually did exist. So uh, you got to try it sometime. All right. So they said he was born on December 25th. Is there any evidence for that? The truth. Mithras was actually born out of a solid rock. All right, leaving a cave. So he, he was born out of a rock, and then when he left, there was a big hole, a cave left. He was not born of a virgin, unless you consider the mountain to have been a virgin. His, virgin, his birth was celebrated on December 25th, but both Mithras worshippers and the earliest Christians borrowed this celebration from earlier winter solstice celebrations. So the fact that he was his, his so-called birthday is the 25th, what if it is the same as Jesus? How would you, what would you say about that? I have the same birthday as Jesus. Yeah. And we don't even know when Jesus was born. We, everybody pretty much knows it's not the 25th. I mean, that's pretty common knowledge. Uh, so to know, to say that Mithras was born on the 25th, so was Jesus, well, they're both myths. It was like, well, well yeah, I mean, I could be born on it. It doesn't matter, <laughs> like you said. Um, but also, we, we know that that isn't, when Jesus was born. That's just a date put on it. Um, all right, here's another one. Mithras was considered a great traveling teacher and a master. All right, just like Jesus, right? He taught parables. He went around teaching. They say, well, Mithras did the same thing. Um, here's the truth. There's nothing in Mithras' tradition that indicates he was a teacher of any kind, but he could have been considered a master of sorts, but why should we expect any deity to be to not do that. Well, we shouldn't expect anything less to be a master. Um, so, um, I, I, I'm, I'm putting up here the truth because this is what I've got from people who've done in, in study depth. Depending on where you go, there's at least when I look at what historians say is that they criticize all the internet stuff because yeah, you have all these phonies on the internet saying that they're experts but they don't have any degrees. They haven't done all the studying like we have. So you've got to be careful who your sources are um, when you go into stuff like this. I'm going to go through a couple more. Mithras had 12 companions or disciples. That's what it said. But there's no evidence for any of this The traditions in the traditions of Iran or Rome, because there was two times. Um, they're thinking it came from the zodiac, personages of the zodiac, uh, moon and the sun, stuff like that. Mithras was considered to be the way, the truth, and the light, and the Logos, Redeemer, Savior, Messiah. You're going to hear those things. Um, is that true? Based on research historical record of the Mithraic tradition, none of these terms have ever been applied to the Mithras deity, with the exception of mediator. 
Uh, Mithras was not the mediator between God and man, but the mediator between the good and the evil gods of Zoroaster. All right, so what does it sound like is going on so far with people making these claims and what's actually true? Um, I'll tell you. It's okay. They're inaccurate. Yeah, well, they're inaccurate. But what does it sound like? It sounds like they're twisting the truth to make it sound like it's similar. It's like, uh, uh, well, I, you know, lying is the easy word, but just, just, just kind of a little bit deceptive. Like, well, he was he was born out of a rock, but that doesn't mean he's born of a virgin. You know, just twisting it to make it look like Jesus, um, the way, the truth, and life, the logos, the redeemer. He was called the mediator, but that doesn't mean he was called all those other things. So that's kind of the stuff you have to look for. And I know at this point it's like, well, I, why do I need to know any of this info? It's good for you to know because hopefully you have conversation with people. If you just stay silent, if we just stay silent about our faith our whole life, that's not, that's not why God saved us. I mean, he saved us because he loves us, but he wants us to multiply. So this is part of it. Um, I'm going to skip that one. All right, I'm going to get to this part. Should we be surprised? Okay, so say that uh, say that this Mithras character that they had some things right about him, uh, that he was uh, he was a he was a great god. Say that he was uh, the mediator between God and man. Say he was some of these things. Should that surprise us? Like, oh my gosh, should anyone ever have thought to a god to be something like Jesus? If there was any thought of that, in, then maybe Jesus is a hoax. Because, I mean, it certainly crosses minds. Should we be surprised? Uh, I'm going to tell you this little story, uh, or this, this historical fact, actually. Uh, this guy named Morgan Robertson wrote about a boat called the Titan. Sound familiar? All right, he, he predicted that if the, he, he wrote about a story. He said, this boat is going to be 800 feet long. It's going to weigh over 60,000 tons. It's going to carry 3,000 passengers. All right, so he wrote about how big it is, what it's going to look like. And then he made these predictions, or not predictions, but he's just writing a story. He said, it's going, to, it's going to hit an iceberg in April. It's going to get struck on the starboard side. 2,000 people are going to sink with it. What does that sound like? I didn't know. I said, what? Titanic. Titanic. Yeah, wrong. It's actually the Titan. <laughs> because he wrote about it 14 years before it happened. All right? Do you know how the Titanic sunk? Same way. In April, it hit an iceberg on the starboard side. And 2,000 people, about 2,000 people died. Crazy. And this guy wrote about it 14 years before it actually happened. So the point is, should we be surprised that sometimes people can almost like prophetic, you know, say things that may uh, actually happen or have thoughts of that? Should we be surprised that people imagine what God to be like? Let's say in Mithras, it was a religion that somebody started. They obviously had to think about, well, if we had a God, what would he be like? Should we be surprised that it's some of the things they got right, that he would be like this? No, not really. You know, God, if there is a God, he should be all-powerful. He should be all-knowing, you know, things like that that we should. So just when you talk to people, you can say that, well, you know, some of the things might be, they might be similar. So what? I mean, we should expect that because, um, I mean, not... Some things, like born a virgin, I mean, that is, you know, a little different. All right, but now, uh, why have cultures for thousands of years imagined what God would be like and actually come close? Now I'm going to ask you guys to talk a little. Why? Why have they imagined what God would be like? Why have they come close? You can take turns. No need to. Why do you think? There's lots of lots of gods over the years. Different myths, myth religion, Zeus, of course, 
could be real. We got to do some research on that. Why do you think? Why do you think they would come close? Or even imagine gods? Any thoughts? I'm not, I'm, I, I ain't looking for the right answer. I'm just asking. How much time we got? 13 minutes. We got 13 minutes. Take your time. What do you guys think? Why, why would some, why, why do people make up gods? Why could they be slightly similar to who God actually is? They pick and choose what they like about God and then make it so it's easier for them to worship them. Right, right, okay. Where does it even come from? Where does all this come from? This desire to want to worship God or to even imagine Oh God. Thoughts, Julia? What do you think? You don't know? We don't want too long to silence YouTube's gonna get they're gonna get bored watching this shit. <laughs> Alright, so I think that's a good question to ask. Uh, I have a couple of verses I want to share with you. Um, to uh, just to kinda of help with that question. Why have cultures for thousands of years imagine what God would be like and actually come close? Alright? This is what I think, and this is what I've read about some other people, is that uh, everybody's dreaming about God, what is He like, is there really a God, and we're coming up with answers and stuff to that. And I think that's why. Uh, and there's this story in Acts, uh, if we can read it, um, Acts chapter 17. If you wouldn't mind pulling it up. Acts chapter 17, 22 to 31. Let's take a quick peek at this. Um, and what about our expert readers? you have a Bible over there? You on the phone back there? you have a Bible? Acts 17, 22 to 31. So look what happens. Want me to read it? Yes, please. Give me a couple slides. 17, 22 to 31. Paper, bro. All right, hit us. 17, 22 to 31. Yes, bro. All right. Then Paul stood in the middle of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I passed by and looked up at you, Objects of worship, I found an altar with this inscription. To the unknown God, whom you therefore unknowingly worship, him I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all things in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by hands, nor is he served by men's of hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives all men life and breathe all things. Uh, that's, you know, actually, that's probably good. I think that's enough. That, that gets the point. Thank you. Um, so, Paul was going to Athens, and he came about, come, came about all these people worshiping different gods. And then he sees this statue or this temple, says, to the unknown god. And they're worshiping it. And then he uses the opportunity to tell them, hey, you know what? Uh, this god you don't know who's worshiping, let, let me tell you who he is. And then he goes into that, talking about, well, he actually is real, and he's the God of everything. And um, so the point here is that they imagined, they were, ha they were trying to you know, understand these gods, and they knew there was something more to the other. We don't know who he is, but we know he's out there. And we want to worship him. And Paul comes and tells him, this is who he is. 
So it's just showing that we're hungering. People, you know, we, we, we just, there's a hunger in us to know God, to, to worship Him. And uh, this last word, maybe get down to the truth. Or why do you think it's important for people to research to make sure you're not led astray? What do you think, Kimberly? See the question again? I do. Okay. <laughs> And you, uh, so I said, why do you think it's important for us to even talk about this, to understand what's really true? Well, then because they're just believing, I guess, in other stuff that's not true, I guess. In a lie. Yeah, in a lie. Yeah. And so once you know the truth, you know what you're really believing, not just, you know, what other people made up along the way. Right. What if, um, let's say your brother, let's choose Elmer. What if Elmer uh, chose that he started doing research and he came to the belief that uh, Jesus was actually a copycat of Mithras and Osiris. And he says, how can I believe in this God who copied these gods who came to be a thousand years before him? How can we believe this guy's a phony? What would you, would you be interested in maybe helping him uncover the truth where you do some research, stuff like that? No? Dang, girl. I gotta choose somebody else who loves their brother. <laughs> no, because I mean, we have the Bible that gives us the answers for Jesus. So, do, how would we know, I guess, um, how they were, I guess? How, how would you, well, how would you say, how do you know that the Bible can be trusted? How do you know that it's accurate? How do you know that it's a, value, a valid source to use for arguing history? Well, then we can use the same thing as for the other ones. How do you know those are valid also? All right. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, well, sort of, yes. But I think what you have to, what I guess what I was wondering is, would you, would you actually do the research to help him find the truth? Or would you just, here's the Bible, this is what it says. If you don't believe it, <laughs> then you're dead. Or what, you know? <laughs> Would you be willing to do the research to help? Because I feel like a lot of people believe this. And it should do something to your heart to think that, you know, so many people are believing a lie and they're rejecting Jesus because of it. I'd like, if I had the opportunity, if you know, I wonder if you had the opportunity to help someone uncover the truth. Well, you know what? Uh, actually, if you really study Mithras, a lot of these things that they say aren't true. This is what was actually true. Um, and how can you prove it? Because that's what counts, is how can you prove it? Um, so, you know, in Elmer's case, you know, he's convinced. How would you unconvince him? Um, and it's not to go fight and argue with him. That's not the way to do it. But this, this verse, it says, And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Why is it so important to know the truth? Because that's what sets you free. When you believe in lies, it's like you're in jail. You're in bondage. You're in captivity, believing lies. And a lot of people do. But, you know, some. Uh, do you guys know anyone who may believe this? You know anybody? Specifically? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know anyone either. Believe what? Uh, that Jesus was a myth. But it's, there's, it's pretty big. You can just go on YouTube and you'll see a whole ton of it. All right. Um, so I guess the whole point of this is, uh, like I said, I know that the content is not all that exciting because maybe none of you guys struggle with it. But the, the point is for those of you who are Christians, uh, who says they're a Christian here? Three, four and a half. <laughs> So, the point is for those of us who are Christians that um, Jesus gives us a commission. He says, go into all the world, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I've commanded you, um, and I'll be with you always. He, he, he wants us, God saved us, but He also has a commission for us to go and to do and to make. But maybe first, some of us, and that's what I'm hoping with these classes, is maybe some of us are really shaky in our faith and are, and are struggling. And if you are, we're, whatever it is, we'll, we'll 
We'll talk about it. We'll tackle it. We can, we'll research it. Because the truth is what's going to help you set you free, give you confidence. Uh, last week we studied about, um, what did we study about, Steve, last week? What was it? I don't remember, huh? You remember? Yeah, about Jesus. Uh-huh. Extra biblical evidence. Extra biblical. Not using the Bible. How can we prove he actually existed? There's historians who wrote about him outside of the Bible. Secular, Jewish. All right, so we've proven that he actually did exist. Today we talked about, was he a myth like other gods? All the, all the so-called claims aren't actually true when you do your research. All right, so that's the end of the slide. Now for questions. So what questions do you guys have? Uh, what or question comments. or comments? Yeah. So your um, when you asked first about what was the question you asked about um, why do God uh, people? Why do they have this desire? So I think it's not even like you see it in um, I don't know when you brought it up. I talked about uh, I I was reminded of the story in Exodus when Moses and he goes up to the mountain and he comes down after God tells them that they've made like a gold calf down at the bottom like Aaron starts collecting them and they're like we don't know when Moses is coming down right. like let's make a calf right. and we'll say that that's the that's the God that brought us out of the land of Egypt right. and he comes down and sees all of that and so it's like a reminder that we have to be careful because even you know they were his chosen people he took them out of that land of, of slavery and for us it's just a reminder that um, you know, we have to be mindful of that too, because we too can easily get caught up in like when we don't hear God's like voice or when He doesn't answer us the way that we want Him to answer us, when He doesn't solve the issues that we have in the time that we want Him to. Like we can too easily like harden our hearts and start to drift from God and start worshiping other things, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in a temple. You can start, like, get caught up in, like, school and focus all of your energy and all your passion towards that and start putting things before God. Yeah, it's true. Okay. So it's not just people out there, the ones that need to, like, be mindful of it, but us too. Yeah, we can make other gods when we're struggling. Other gods to bring us comfort, work. Some people like to work over 60 hours, you know, it could be, that could be it. Mm. <laughs> um, so, um, do you, what, what, what kind of things do you think you need help in? What, what are you guys struggling in with trusting that Jesus, because that's the topic we're going on, trusting that Jesus is who he says he is. Uh, what are some areas that you aren't very confident in. Um, so, so far we learned about historically, historical evidence, all right, extra biblical. You guys better remember this for next week. Let go. All right. How do you guys feel on this point? If you were to say, do you actually believe that Jesus existed, not using the Bible, like one to three, how confident would you be? Talk, you know, trusting that yes, he did, because of these sources, how confident would you be? In, like, you mean in like using them? Yeah. In yes. The debate using type of thing, or yeah, yeah. Personally believing oh, yeah. them? That's Both. Both. Well, there's two different answers. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's do personally. Personally. And then three. You'd be a three yeah, using this. Like two, yeah. Okay, so uh, three is the most confident. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, I won't write that down. Sorry. All right, so you feel you feel pretty confident using those. Okay. No, I I feel pretty confident believing it. Believing it. I don't it. know about using them. Okay, like, okay. Which one to three? Why would oh, you use three. it if you? Okay. Oh, you mean just uh, like you don't remember? You don't. You're not. You don't know all the content. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's understandable. Uh, what about you guys? Anybody? How, what do you think so far? Do you believe Jesus existed historically, just from last week? 
we studied different people who existed before or during that time they wrote about him. Anyone still shaky on whether he believed, whether he really existed according to history? A little bit? Steve? No. You're not? What about David in the back? What do you think? According to history, last year, I know you don't remember a lot from last week, but just so far, what do you think? What about it? Do you think Jesus existed? Huh? Do you think he really existed? Mm, yep. All right. And if you were to use history, that was last week's. So, all right. So today, was he a myth? No. Was he a myth? Or a copycat of other gods. I don't know. Okay, there we go. All right. So that was today. We learned there's some claims: Horus, Osiris, Mithras, probably some others. Jesus was a copycat of those. They existed before him. They said all the same things about Jesus. Actually. All the claims that they make, most all of them, are incorrect. All right, they're just twisted. Because the part in the Roman time, they started the Mithras religion. They used some of Christianity, kind of blended it in there. Um, so it was deceptive. And, uh, you know, I wonder, maybe, you know, maybe the devil had something to do with it, just deceiving people. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. And he's doing it today. He's certainly deceiving them, like, you know, not, not Elmer, but, you know, the Elmer we were talking about got deceived. Kimberly didn't want to help him out, but nice. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What other areas do you believe Jesus is who he is? You need to be confident. And I'm hoping you guys can somehow get there and and you can, you know, and, and you can probably learn all the facts and still be unsure. But what about using the Bible? Are you confident are you confident in the Bible? On is this really a reliable source or was it written by people who believed it that's why they wrote about it they well they were Christian they wrote about it I want to hear from somebody who maybe don't doesn't believe it and what's their opinion um, or you know did all the did the did the New Testament writers Matthew Mark Luke and John did they even write those maybe somebody else wrote them hundred years later um, stuff like that Maybe I'm not phrasing the question right. I'm sorry. But uh, the Bible, do you trust that the Bible is accurate? Can you trust that the Bible is true? Do you guys trust it? I think for, for a lot of us, probably. But uh, there's a lot of people who don't. And when you're a historian, you take out, what do you take out when you read the Bible? Supernatural. Yeah. You don't look at the supernatural. Supernatural. What are those things? Miracles. Miracles, yep. Prophecy. Historians have to take all that out. And we're looking at just histor historically, was it accurate in claiming historical events? Did it really exist? Things like that. Um, but the Bible, the supernatural things, that's I think what all of us have experienced. And this is a topic that I am no expert in, guys. I'm telling you. If you think it's struggle for you, it's worse for me. Okay? I'm not the smartest cookie in the tray. Okay? I don't know how I, I am where I am. I have no idea. Um, but I think it's just God, God helps us. And I, you don't need to be super smart. You just want, you have to have a desire to know what's true. And that's what you, that's what we're hoping you guys come to grips with because you need to be confident. Are you a Christian or are you not? Do you really believe Jesus is who he says he is? Did he really die for your sins? Are you really saved? Those are the things you have to answer. And if you could just answer that, you would have such a peace. That's huge. And I've come to the understanding, you know, long before this, but when I, when I, when I heard some of these things, I was shooken up when I heard a myth. Jesus was like, copycat of it. was like, what the heck? No. How could you do that, Jesus? You know, and stuff like that. But it wasn't true. You know, but it'll shake people up. And don't act like it won't shake you up. Some things will. But I'm hoping that you guys can gain confidence because I, I you know, I think that uh, 
we sure need it. My goodness, we need to be passionate about what we believe. So for anyone who's shaky um, in stuff, oh yeah, is there, that, that was the, the question, and we're going to end right now. Uh, is there anything you guys want to study on in the next classes? We're talking about Jesus. Is he really who he says he is? Does he exist? Was he a copycat of other myths? Uh, you know, what other areas uh, do you guys want to learn about? Or are you struggling in that you want to talk about? Any thoughts? I like that we're studying, like, the extra biblical information. Because yeah. a lot of us probably haven't um, dived into that too, too strongly. Mm -hmm. Maybe just in, like, um, some classes we might have taken in college. But aside from that... Uh, we can use that source. And when you when you're when you're talking to people about Jesus, if you just bring up the Bible as your source, most people won't take you serious. And that's it's not because the Bible isn't a good source. It's just because people believe that it isn't. And people themselves don't really know. And what's they don't in know either. In the first place. Yeah. yeah, most people believe the Bible. The Bible is translated so many times. How can you even trust it? You know, all these different things. And when you're hit with those questions, what are you going to say? So are there any, are there any topics? Because next, you know, for next week and the following, anything you guys... If you don't know now, you could always text me or something. Because anything? You guys good on who Jesus is? You believe he's who he says he is and all that stuff? We, we shouldn't even be talking about it. It's awesome. It'll do something to you when you really believe it. Yeah. Like, I know the Patriots are going to win tomorrow. Excited. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know that. But, uh, you know, I'm just confident. That... Anyways. Okay. <laughs> so, what do you submit? All the claims said about him aren't true. Okay, not... So there's some similarities, but we can expect that. We can expect that because people are yearning for God. Will you guys help them find him? That's the question. Will you guys take time out of your day to help someone struggling in what they believe to chat with them. Because I, I, I think about when I meet someone they do, I, my heart pulls for them. Man, they're stuck in this lie. Just like if someone I knew was stuck in drugs and they couldn't get out, same thing, stuck in a lie that they're believing. So we're going to close today. I am going to quiz you guys next week. So I hope you learn because you got to use this stuff. Mithris. Mithris. All right. Mithris. You forgot the L, by the way. Thank you. All right. We're going to pray, guys. Um, so just as you are, let's pray. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll pray for us today. We're going to ask someone else to pray next week. Um, God, thank you for today. Thank you for this class. God, thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can trust you. And I pray that, God, if there's any shaky faith here, God, uh, that you would help us to come to know you, Jesus, that you would reveal yourself to us, to know that you're true, to know that you are who you say you are, God, and that you're the one we're all looking for, God. You're the one the whole world is looking for, Jesus. And you've commissioned us to be your ambassadors, to tell people who it is that they're searching for, God. And I pray that you would help us to be so sure of you that that our confidence, God, and our faith, God, that you shining through us, God, would be attractive to other people, God. Change our lives, change our hearts, God, because we want to know the truth. Uh, and I pray for every person here, God, that you, could, you, could, you would start working in us more mightily, God, uh, to use us, God, for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. All right, who wants some uh, info here? Come here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to. That's what you do. Come here. I'm going to show you. You're just taking it out. I'm teaching you, kids. So when you're done, you can.